those white hands. Hey, um, this is kind of cool. We have Billy Gunn in town, uh, and he got to train with us for the week. We had Paul White in town. Um, we finished up today was the last workout, but I kind of want them to talk to you guys and give you insight, or at least Billy, give you insight on what he did this week. And we just had a great conversation uh, on the way home talking about, how would you say that, Billy? It was like, you don't want to be the top dog in your gym leading the workouts all the time. You, you got to find some other people that might um, be a little different or uh, can set you up to win because of different stuff. Like today for me, uh, Robbie did a couple exercises that was, wow, uh, an eye opener, a real eye opener to an isolation that fatigued me, which is kind of wild. An isolation fatigued you. Yeah, an isolation exercise fatigued me on hyperextensions, and I freaking love it. I got the hyperextension set up at home because I think that just the lower back is such a important part of the body for me, especially uh, to keep really, really strong. I mean, like if I have to get weak anywhere, I'm okay with arms getting weak or a bench press getting weak. But if if the compression on the back and the lower back and the legs get weak. Now, oof, that's that's not good. Um, and we did that with uh, Robbie today. And so for Robbie, he's that leader for me that I could see and I can analyze going, whew, the way he hits it. And so is like, he's a stealth fighter, I guess you would say. Like he's pinpoints. And you said it. You said one rep of Robbie's is like a guy doing 100 reps, and his one rep's still better than that guy's 100 it's still reps. still better. Still, I, I, I wanted to make that comparison, but I couldn't because it's so far beyond that. Um, this mic right here is for Billy Gunn. Oh, he's, he's still just doing a little something. He'll be over here, guys. So get your questions ready for this guy. little question and answers with the superstar Billy Gunn. Um, but he'll give his insight on what he saw today. And then we had another discussion yesterday. And I thought this was good insight on Jeff's part. Um, sometimes I don't see uh, the feed or the com comments from uh, the views on, on TikTok or YouTube or something. And so he was talking about, we do this exercise. And uh, I got that exercise from Charles like 30 years ago. And it's basically a seated row, but you just stay in a front uh, lowered position and you really pull it up and back, contract the rear delts back, mid back, but it feels good on the, uh, like we were talking about the fascia, it like stretches that abdomen and, and the lower back and it stretches it and then that contraction it feels great. Visually, um, besides the positioning, it looks like just front pull downs. But it's it's so different. It was so different. And today, uh, we all got to do it again. And uh, Robbie was kind of taking us through a little twist to that. And again, it's just it's amazing. But Jeff's point was there was a lot of comments talking about uh, you're wasting your time. That's just do your front pull downs. It's the same exercise. And you can, you guys can definitely 100%, you don't even have to say that. You can just bypass the page and move on if you want. Um, for me, they're not even close to the same. They're not even relevantly close to the same, except for it's a back workout. Um, but they give me two completely different isolations. Uh, um, the one, I cannot go heavy. The seated, I cannot go heavy, even though it visually looks like the regular pull downs. Compared to the pull downs, I can go heavy. Um, but the shoulder's in a different position and the elbow's going to a different position. And I'm pull, I'm trying to pull it to me, but it still goes out in a little front because you're trying to get around your face where the second one is right to the chest. So they're both, both really cool. Um, but we did that today. We did bent over rows. Like right now, you guys know that we're, we're starting this Titan Challenge 4, which is, oh, we're loving this. Uh, I'm loving this challenge because I got to start it in a... Um, a decent shape, I would say, for this next uh, 12 weeks. We're already, what are we, two weeks in? And so it's cool. I got a guest posing at the end of this, so it works out really well for me and my schedule. And uh, 
if you guys also, while we have this and you have questions about your training on what you're finding that's working and not working, let me know also uh, what you're finding about Titan Challenge 4 that you um, like or have questions about. All right. Jeffrey, is there any questions yet? Especially questions for Billy so he can answer those. That'd be great. Yeah, guys, any questions you have that you want to ask Billy Gunn? He's going to be joining us in a couple of seconds. He's on his way. I can hear him now. But let's see what we have. Oh, come on. This is easy. Okay. Cover bulk when body fat is over 25% male. Wow. Uh, I, I would do blood work first to find out what's going on health-wise. Uh, that might be the first thing because uh, there might be second. I don't know how old you are, so I don't know if you have a fatty liver or anything like that. There's things that might be because you got you didn't get there in a week, so you've been there for a little while. So is there anything's going on? Uh, is there a first stage? Uh, you know, diabetes. Is there something else that might be triggered that body fat to get to that level? Um, but depending on your age and uh, your willingness to find out what else is going on inside of you after you get your blood work done, I would get that body fat down. I would get it down. Um, is this a thing? Because I'm not familiar with this. Is if you are heavy and uh, overweight, is it a thing to say, let me get bigger because I've seen that question a few times and I'm just trying to figure it out. They're like, hey, I'm already heavy. I'm already fat. Should I just keep bulking um, or should I tighten up? And you guys, please answer that for me because I'm curious on that because I don't I don't understand that. If uh, there shouldn't be a question on should you bulk up uh, if you're overweight and fat. Is the answer different if that fat person has muscle under it versus if that fat person has no muscle under it? I would say that. Yeah, 100 percent. So that's that's another one. But I don't know what this person's, you know, if he says, hey, I'm I've been bulking. I'm at 25 percent. Um, then that changes it. I was thinking if you're fat, you're fat dog. Yeah, I'm with you on that. You can be jacked and fat. You're not going to fucking keep getting that. Yeah, fat. so just fat. I, um, try to keep your body fat in a reasonable amount or at least know that your body fat is in a position. And the reason why I'm assuming that the person they just asked that is heavy is because he didn't say, hey, I'm bulking. I'm at 25. Should I keep bulking or should I keep going off season? I yeah. think that would have been a more helpful. Um, but if you haven't trained and you're 25 percent, I'm going to assume that you're you're not doing anything. Yeah, so a little, little nuance there to that situation. Because, like, uh, you guys have seen me completely peeled to the bone, and that's around 8% body fat. So, uh, easily, I'm at uh, 15s or 16s or above that when I'm off season, uh, easily. Um, so, I'm not really worried about uh, <clears throat> if your body fat is at, you know, in those ranges, 15 uh, even 18, depending on you and how much muscle you have on you. Um, so let's just be smart. That that extra body fat, um, we probably don't need it if you're in the 20s. Don't 20s is a little high. I don't mind it if you're young. Um, but as long as you're feeding it and that's why you're a little heavier, I'm okay with that. It's a great question for Billy. Hey, Billy, what is your current nutrition plan? Billy, what is your current nutrition plan? They would like to ask. He's still coming in. He's still coming. So just a minute, guys. He'll be here soon. Um, that is a great question. Uh, I did put, I can tell you about uh, what we just did for uh, Big Show, Paul White. So Paul is uh, obviously a, a, a ginormous human, um, seven foot, four something. Now you would think that uh, 
because he's such a large human that we put him on a lot of calories right from the start, that's not what I'm going to do. Um, because again, like for all of you, uh, we have a good range to start with and then we're going to watch it. But for right now, I'm just trying to reintroduce carbohydrates to him because he's one of those guys that ran away from it, went keto and all that kind of stuff. Um, so we have to introduce carbs back into his system to make sure he's using the carbohydrates correctly for his body. And then we give him a good portion of protein. Here's a little thing, though. Because he can eat a lot, he slowed his metabolism down by eating the way he's been eating. He's only eating like two or three meals to the most. And so that slowed down the metabolism. And so we want to speed the metabolism up. But by doing that, here's the problem. If you're an eater like me, you really got to be mentally solid. I mean, when that metabolism starts going and you're starting to feel hungry, us eaters can start eating and, and we'll take in an easy 10,000 calories and then we blow back up and it, it's not the way you want to go. So, but I'll keep a track on him and I'll keep letting you guys know how that's going with him. If you got anybody in your family that's overweight, uh, parents that are overweight, kids that are overweight, um, you can follow along with me on how I'm going to work with him on getting him in shape. That will help you guys understand it as well. Or if you have clients that are scared of carbohydrates and how to put it back in and introduce it. These are really good, simple tips to teach people how to do it. Thanks for the question. You ready? Yeah. You want this one? Lightweight, more reps, or heavy controlled weight for results? Uh, so the person that asked lightweights, more reps, or heavy controlled weight for results? Uh, There's always an or in these questions. Yeah, I, I'd go with Jeffrey. I like both. Both are great. I, I'm assuming that you're going to do it all. It's not you're going to just do the one. Um, the only thing is I, I don't ever do. That's the thing. Yeah, I don't do lightweight. I don't know what lightweight means. What does that mean? I think for them it means that you can go through a, a 15 reps and not be crushed. Um, yeah, so, because if you can do 15 reps with something and it crushes you by the 15th one, that's still heavy weight for the rep range you're doing. Right. So uh, as long as you got that mindset, then you're doing great. You're doing great. Um, controlled, you never have to put the word controlled in anything when you're asking about training. So the, like, because I, I think you're saying, Lightweight, of course, you're controlled. Um, but with heavyweight, it's controlled weight for results. It's always controlled. It doesn't matter what it is. So that's irrelevant to it. Uh, let's go for another one. Okay. How do you keep your mood in check when you're depleted when doing the 30 day blitz? It's a good one. It's a great question. And it is, it is, it's tough. Mostly a 30 day blitz is tough. Um, I, I, I have to realize that it, it is extremely hard because calories and deficit and fatigue play with your mind. And so I just try to eliminate, um, <laughs> I try to eliminate I'm lucky enough that I can I can remove myself from uh, locations to where I don't have to be around humans as much, um, and it's tough on the blitz. Uh, but but I think I'm an extreme person when it comes to that. Where Mona could do the blitz and Heath Evans did the blitz right with me, and they never lost the um, uh, they never fluctuated. They just stayed. It's it's pretty level, and that's that's Mona like twenty four seven. So it just depends on people. Just know that you're in a calorie deficit. Know that uh, food does play with your mind. Um, and if on those fast days, maybe the day after, it's, it's still hurting you. Uh, try to get a little vegetables in and just try to keep calm and just know that the food is messing with you. It's not so much your mind. Great question, though. It's something that I know for a fact you've done it. 
uh, to ask that question. Yeah, to, to ask that question that yeah. came from experience. Yeah, you, you didn't learn that by reading it. You learned it by by actually doing it. Serge, where are you? Oh, sorry. We'll, we'll get back to you as soon as uh, Serge shows up. Um, I, I can't translate that here. I don't see how we can, my friend. Thank you. Thank you, though, for that. Shout outs to Mexico. Hola, como esta? Billy, you got one second? Is he asleep? No, he's, yeah, he's passed out. That he's boy's asleep. Out. Uh, hello, hello. Thank you. Thank you for the hello. hello. Best protein food? Uh, I'd go steak. Steak, baby. steak is your gold on steak, right? Look at this. Look at this. Watch this, guys. What you eating, Jeffrey? <laughs> steak. 24-7, man. This guy don't miss. Don't miss. Yeah. The old feeder workout. Do they work? Do you know the term feeder? Mm -mm. Remember when... um. We would do crazy high reps on like rear delts okay. every day. Those kind of things. Like just end of the day, five sets of 25. Oh, so, so day in and day out kind of a yeah. thing. Is that what the, the term Rich is? Rich Fiana called him feeders. Oh, okay. So okay. He'd, do, he'd do like 300 yeah. side laterals with a 10 pound weight right. every night. Uh, I I think uh, if you're young, I think that's something that's doable. I I call that a delayed overtraining, like a yeah. delayed growth, is what I call that. And so I would uh, um, back in the day, I'd get my workout done in the gym. I'd go home. I'd be done with that, but I'd still have my cardio to do, and I'd do some uh, swimming laps. And so every time before I did my swimming laps. And I would go in and do five sets of 20 on rear delts. And then I'd jump in the pool and do a nice breaststroke to continue to rotate those shoulders and, and get a, a nice overtraining to the shoulders for delayed growth later on. Um, and I like those as a youngster. As a, as someone that's getting up there, no, I, I think that's a wear and tear uh, and I can't recover from it. So it's just, if you can recover from that stuff, I think that's great. There is a difference between, um, I definitely wouldn't do it for a long period of time. It's for a short burst of like three weeks, four weeks, and then stop that. Because it is just more mileage on your body at the end of the day. Um, and then can you recover from it? So, but for me at this stage, I, I, I rarely do that. We did it a couple of years ago with the rear delts again, um, but I felt that I wasn't recovering. So 20 years does that to you. Good question, though. Did not know they were feeders. Do you have healthy cholesterol levels eating all that meat? Yeah, uh, meat doesn't cause, remember this, that's a, wow, that's, you can kind of see that it's not meat that causes a cholesterol problem. It's, a lot of the times it's just your your family history and who you are. So just remember that. That's a. Uh, and even if you did. Yeah. Blood work. Yeah. Easy. Just do the blood work. You got to stay on the blood work and then switch it. As soon as you do the blood work and you find out for the first time there's something wrong, take care of it. Don't sit on it and go, well, I'm okay. Yeah. Take care of that stuff. But yeah, I think for me, I just, the way you say it, it's like, oh, I don't eat meat. So everybody out there that doesn't eat meat doesn't have bad cholesterol. And that's so not true. Right. That is like the worst thing that you can mentally think that, hey, you're golden. I don't eat meat. That in no world does everybody work that way. And you won't know if you're not doing, you're taking the right measurements to get yourself checked or finding out what it is and switching it up. Like this one right here. My doctor said it's detrimental to the health eating five to eight meals every two and a half hours. Like you, it'll elevate your insulin, glucose, pancreas, stomach, and then blah, 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 blah. Okay. I believe what you say. Can you elaborate? 
Well, I, I, I don't, I, I'm, I'm not going to argue with your doctor. Your doctors, you know, right. he, um, doctors have very little education when it comes to nutrition, very little education when um, a family doctor's it's amazing on the amount of little nutrition um, schooling they get to become a doctor. Now, that being said, I'm not going to argue with your doctor. Your doctor is going to give your point of view of what the common analogy is for anybody and everybody. Um, but the one thing that's only allowed me to continue to do what I do and live the way I do, and the blood work shows it too, the blood work shows that I'm my physical, um, when we did the testing on your your real age compared to your i guess what, what they call it chrono, chronological yep. ages the body is a 38 year old which is really kind of cool for a guy in his 50s so that's a that's a fun thing for me to test and test my blood and make sure that it's healthy but again um you you for me it's the common sense so let's just talk common sense if you feed in the body and your body uses the food uses it and so you're as a, a person you stay healthy you continue to build muscle and density to your body because that's what it comes down to it's the density of your body before it deteriorates away um those are good signs those are common sense things like it's like oh <laughs> i'm healthy well the joints are healthy the the body's healthy uh, the muscularity is healthy um and to stay strong is longevity so I would just stay with that. It's a tough one for you because I know that maybe you have significant others that go, well, the doctor said this. It's amazing how much doctors find out every two years, three years, and how much it changes. Um, also, I don't understand the point about your insulin level. Your insulin level goes up on anything you eat. Anytime. This, this, this is a confusing thing to me that in society today, your insulin level sh should never move. You're eating a meal. Of course it changes. It goes back to normal. You're taking in a meal. You know what happens when you go out and run really, really hard? Your heart goes like, oh, my gosh, 160, 170 beats. You know what happens after? Hmm. It goes back to normal. What? Yeah. So I think you guys are getting so wrapped up in I can't have the insulin level jump up and down. Well, I mean, that's what food does to you. Um, so it's again, I, I don't want to teach you guys anything that if you guys want to fast and not eat food and stay away from carbohydrates, that's your call. I just, for me and how I'm raising my family and how I, I train my people, I'm in the long game. I know for a fact that food keeps you healthy. Starving the body does not keep it healthy. Okay. Give me one second. Two seconds, guys. Wake his ass up. Hey, let's jump back for one second on, on that question, because I, I think that's a great question. Which one? Um, the doctor? About the doctor, because that's going to be, I think, everybody. I, let's let's use doctor as a metaphor for not just the doctor, your family doctor. Here's the question again for everybody. Yeah, for everybody to see this, see this, and see the situation he's put in now. He's being told by his family doctor or a doctor that this is incorrect to do what he's doing. 
Um, and so that weighs on you because this is a guy that you 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 trust, you value, you assume knows and has all the answers. Again, he's human. Um, and it's again research as we do. Uh, science is not guaranteed. I guess they would say that's what the great thing about science is they continue to learn. But and his intuition is he believes you. Yeah. Here's the simple realization because like the question before this was how's your cholesterol because you eat a lot of red meat so that individual assumes that cholesterol comes from meat you eat red meat you have high cholesterol that's the way it works and again it doesn't work that way um some people are vegetarians and they have high cholesterol and they don't eat any meat or protein in that sense and they still have high cholesterol so how do you explain that first and foremost we're not all the equal. We're not all the same. Okay. Our, our heritage is different. So that being said, and along with this guy here, do the blood work. This is, this is the simplest thing you can do. If your blood work comes back and there's something with your ASTs and stuff like that, that there's it's off and there's something going on where your body's not utilizing the proteins or the foods um, that it should, then there's something wrong and we can fix that. But just to have a doctor tell you this is what it is and then you look at the numbers and the numbers don't support that and that's the reason why i i continue to tell you guys carbohydrates are the biggest friends to me for a lifetime so you i put a video mona put a video on my page today and it talks about how i ate as a kid 12 13 14 years old and it set me up to win and I never ran away from that. Even the understanding of how carbohydrates change in your body as you age. Um, do we all age? Yes, we do. But the one great thing about that is you can see how your body's aging. Some people age faster than others. Like my ultimate goal was to age as slow as possible. That's it. Um, death is undefeated. But as long as I can continue to do what I'm doing, I slow it down a bit. Um and so get the blood work done. Let's find out what's going on there. And then if there is numbers, then your doctor has a right to say something like, for you, we can't do this. But just to listen to somebody or read something online and go, hey, um, you need to do this type of diet over that diet. Try them. Try each diet and see what you got. See what comes back on the blood work. See what your body is okay with and not okay with. Um, it was interesting. I my blood markers were better eating three red meat meals a day than when I went down and started doing the uh, 30 day blitz for me. My body loves red meat and it functions better on red meat. And I recover better on red meat and my blood markers are better on red meat than they are on fish. And your mood's better. Right? And my mood's tenfold better. Um, so there's so many factors. It's not just one thing like, like the cholesterol thing. The blood markers, there's so many things going on inside of your body that interact with each other. You want to add to that, Jeffrey? You're not going to know, right? You can't just go off the word of other people. It's really as simple as just getting your blood work done, seeing all your markers, and then making the necessary changes, if any, from there. But it's also talking to the right person. You don't want to talk to somebody that is trying to sell you something, right? So maybe your doctor wants to give them some medication or this and that or blah, blah, blah. It's not hard in 2023 to get things solved and figured out. Yeah, let's let's use uh, let's use what we have available to us to make sure that each of us are right and assume that the other person's nutrition is different Um I mean, you guys have known me long enough. I hope that you've known that me and Mona diet two different ways. And so, uh, again, heritage is, uh, again, a big part of it. What we did when we were kids is a big part of it. And where we are age-wise today is a big part of it. So just keep getting tested. Keep getting your checkups. Um, for me, it, it seems like uh, I wish I did that more as a kid. So I could have saw how much more potential I could have done or how much harder I could have pushed my body or pulled back. Probably would have had to pull back a lot more when I was a kid. Um, but just to get my markers set, see where the uh, cholesterol is, see where the thyroid's working, where my kidneys and liver are functioning at, where my T level, but mostly where my free level is. 
those kind of things. It just uh, changes the game. But this is the cool thing for me is to see and 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 uh, be a father for the first time because I get to see Titan and, and what I can do um, for him as he's growing and getting this done. Because the one thing I know that I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to pull him back and have him do less than what I did and hopefully have that mindset that you can't out train everybody else. That's a silly concept. Dear Mike, I signed up for one-on-one -on -one this morning. I'm in mm -hmm. the UK. Cannot wait to get started and work hard. Just wondering what the next steps are. I'm ready to start working hard and give it a hundred percent. Okay, great. Okay. So if you signed up for one-on-one, -on -one, um, you got the letter from an assistant back to you just saying, I need your check in. And so I'm going to need to get some information from you. If you did not receive that, please let us know here. Um, you got an email. I know that. So make sure to say I did not get that because that should actually explain to you the next steps. Your next steps are get me over some photos, um, information about your training right now, your nutrition um, and your time schedules on, on when you do train. Uh, so again, before we get off of here today, let me know if you've got that. If not, um, we'll put down the email for you to write to. He's eager. He's ready to go. I love it. And we'll get working on that. Oh, no. No. No, that's Dora. Yeah. She's doing something. <laughs> okay. Good questions today, guys. This is great. Tips for shoulder joint health. My rotator cuff is a major problem. How would you fix this? Can you train with bad shoulders? Oh, man, you're going to love this next two weeks. Uh, is that Jake? That is Jock. Jock. Um, hey, so this next two weeks on YouTube, and that's uh, YouTube backslash Mike O'Hearn, mm -hmm. Titan. Watch that because both guys have frozen shoulders that are training with me this week. Um as bad as everybody's shoulders may be, man, I can't imagine too many humans that have worse shoulders than these two guys because they've wrestled for over 30 years and their shoulders are just beat up. That being said, we're working around those injuries. We're working around the locked shoulders. They have a, um, one has a complete locked up shoulder, but we, we uh, kind of go over all that. And then again, remember that just like your muscle needs food, uh, your connective tissue needs food as well. And that's going to help that joint and relieve some of the pain there. Um, supplementation is a huge thing. I'd get started on that and then continue to try to get as much range of motion with that shoulder. And I go over that all on the YouTube video. So you're going to have two weeks of studying to do as these things come out. And also, don't just watch the videos for anybody on here with bad shoulders, watch the videos, all the videos, because how do you train legs with a bad shoulder? How do you still use range of motion on your back, your arms, your bicep without hurting your shoulder? So there's a lot more factors than just go, I have a bad shoulder. I'm only going to watch his shoulder workout. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. There's, there's, there's uh, reasons and um, form checks on all the bodies, all the different body parts. A year or so ago, you mentioned that in one of your videos, you were preparing for a movie role. What movie was it? So we can watch. Thank you, Mike. Um, I have two movies uh, premiering at Sundance Film Festival this Friday and Saturday. Friday. This Friday, two movies. Uh, the first one is Magazine Dreams that will uh, premiere on Friday, 6 p.m. at Sundance Film Festival. And Saturday is Divinity. Um, these are the two movies that we just filmed and that I got in shape for. And... I hope you guys all hear about these two movies um, in this next months to come as they launch in theaters worldwide. I, I know they're the both really cool for me because uh, I'm co-starring in both of them. Uh, and they're both getting some great hype. Thank you. So I think what we did was uh, we've been working out every day, pretty intense. And 
if I could show you guys, Billy does want to be here right now with us. He does. Um, but he is absolutely passed out on the couch after this morning's workout. So we'll try another time. We'll hop on a little bit. We'll run it back. Let's see what else we got here. Oh, here you go. Jeffrey, will you explain this one to them? Oh, yeah. I, I wrote down in the comments section about this specifically. But you have people pretending to be you commenting on YouTube to win prizes. Yes. Yes, those are bots. Those are fucking... So I think the one cool thing is you guys know they can't pretend to be me. They can use a, a portion of my name, the Mike O'Hearn or something. Right. Um, but there will be numbers after it. Also, you'll be able to see that there is no verification that that individual is Mike O'Hearn. Yeah, on YouTube, you'll see um, a great check, Mike O'Hearn. Yeah, on Instagram, is a blue check. That's the only Mike O'Hearn there is. Um, and, uh, and please, dude, hopefully you're not watching a video of Mike doing barbell rows, teaching you how to do rows. And the only thing Mike says in the video is, hey – this is what you should do. This is my technique. Have a good day. And then you see a bot commenting under every single one of the posts saying, you won. Please DM. No prize. <laughs> so I don't talk to anybody. I don't comment to anybody, but I tell everybody they want well, a prize. I just yeah. mean, I hope people are smart enough yeah. to know that shit. Yeah, I, I did. See, we did they that. Are. And my team is is. is good as they can be they, they clean those things up but those are bots there's going to be a lot of those kind of things but again you guys know that the verification on mike o'hearn is it um yeah. the bots are not just mike o'hearn you can see that they have numbers after them or fake accounts yes yeah, all right guys bots. thank you for Full saying force. that and i appreciate it guys but just flag just them. do common sense <clears throat> also i it. i'm just not one person to click on anything when they say you win something well that's what that's what i'm hoping people don't yeah. fall for that it's like you know, in the '90s, you'd get the phone call from the. Yeah, that's a that old school. Uh, uh, hey, I'm in Europe. I lost my wallet. Send me five hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> oh, all right. I can send you ten thousand back. <laughs> um, this one really was. I I don't think you guys really realize how great a question that was oh. because, uh, it is tough dieting. And, you know, there is some things you can say about bodybuilders is like when they're dieting for a show, it's it's a moody situation and food plays with you. And the reason why food plays with you so much more for bodybuilders is because there's not much fat there. So as you're doing this, you're losing the fat, which your body wants to go to. So there's not much for your body to really utilize to give you those calories so you can stay in a surplus. You're, you're, everything's Almost. coming off you. So your your brain, I don't know if you guys know this works off of 50 grams of carbs a day your brain functions off of carbohydrates and so just for you to keep level headed in that sense you still need a little something something all right thank you for that question though i'm way up at the top if you got something you go i might I don't get this. Let me know if you understand this question. Okay. For example, on a cut, if I'm taking in 2,200 calories and after working out, I'm at 1,800 calories, do I still – do I eat to still reach my daily 2,200 calorie intake? Well, you're on a I, – I can't answer that. Yeah. You're on a cut, so you're on those calories until your body changes or doesn't change. If it doesn't change, then you know that you're not at the right calorie intake. And if it does change, then that kind of gives you a direction on which way you need to go for the next couple of weeks. Because, again, a cut's 12 weeks, right? You know, 10 to 12 weeks. So you kind of know, um, which is great. Uh, like when we get the Titan check-ins, I, I always feel like they're bummed out that I don't tell the person to change a lot. Um, but that's a good thing. That's, that's the thing. If somebody calls me and, and they do a check-in on the Titan crew and I say, 
leave everything the way it is. You're perfect. The body is working with you. You're dropping body fat. You're getting stronger. You're getting leaner. And we don't have to change anything. That's gold. Um, if you call me and say, hey, uh, I, I got to keep my calories where they are. Um, but the reason why I say that is because if you, if you know that your calorie intake and you're cutting with 2,200 calories, that wouldn't be a question afterwards on why you have 18 and are you training early in the morning? Okay. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to put so much together with just what you gave me. I'm sorry, yeah. sir. Um, what do you mean if, if, if it's 2,200 on the plan? If it's 2,200 on the plan, then you, and you think you have the right plan, then yeah, stay with the calorie intake. It is a simple way to say it. I just don't understand. Um, Cause I, I assume everybody trains in the morning. That's my problem. Yeah. So regardless, so let's say he's training at night though, and he's already eaten 18. Okay. Yeah, you just finish it out. 400 calories. Let's see. How... Uh, sorry, man. I, uh, there's so many more factors than just you. Yeah. You give me an in, insight on your calorie intake. <clears throat> No, I do not. No, I want the inflammation. Uh, I want the body to recover naturally. I don't want to force uh, in, any kind of inflammation to go away faster than what it naturally would do. That's one of the big things. I, I, I love like maybe later in the day or the next day or something doing something like that, but not, not for after workouts or anything. Mm -mm. And then I also do the sauna, but not for the same reason most people do the sauna. I do the sauna to utilize uh, uh, water weight retention um, and skin skin care, skin health. Oh, here's a good one, I think. Go for that, Jeffrey. Uh, trying to change the metabolism at almost 60 year olds. What's your recommendation? Um, drink the water, stay on the plan. Uh, make sure you got the different foods in the system to make sure that your body can utilize it and find out what your body works with best. Um, and then just watch your body's going to talk to you. Uh, do not run away from being uh, healthy and realistic on the calories. So what that means is, um, if you're a good sized person, make sure you take in the food to feed that good sized person, uh, the best you can, and then allow your body time to adjust to it. So most people I think will go out and let's say you start your nutrition plan. It has you at 3000 calories and you start eating, but your body's not used to that 3000 calories, right? Cause you've been eating twice a day for the last three months. So your body's automatically going to blow up and retain water, right? Because it's like traumatized. You're feeding me way too much. It doesn't work. What's cool about the body is if you if you take your time and you process it and you let your body heal itself, there's going to be a couple weeks uh, on that nutrition plan, and then you're going to feel the body kick in to where it starts utilizing it. And that still happens at 60. So don't don't think it doesn't. I'm going to try to answer this one here. All right. English is a little off, but I think, Mike, it's my fourth month starting my fitness journey. I do all the exercises and I have a lot of form from you. What What do you suggest me? When do you suggest I should start power bodybuilding? I, I guess he's trying to ask, when's the best time to start power bodybuilding? You want to answer that? I mean, no, he, he wants you. I would say I would have started four months ago. Bam. Yeah. Uh, power bodybuilding, just for anybody that's here, is the most simple, basic uh, principles to training to set you up to win. Yeah. Um, and that's what I did as a youngster, and that's why I got to where I got to. It is your starting plan. Your power bodybuilding is by far the smartest for anybody that wants to be healthy, 
do this for a long period of time. Make sure you can stay injury free uh, and develop some incredible strength and muscularity as well as the side effect. So yeah, it's start that. So the right time to start is as soon as possible. Yeah. That's, that way you ingrain that. Philosophy. It is a beginning. That's the plan that Titan will start when he starts training. That'll be the first thing out of the door because it teaches you how to do it. And it gets the volume you can do when you start. And to, you know, and, and that's the biggest thing, man. When you're young and you can do that volume, get that volume in. Get it in there. Because of you, I'm over 50 and able to eat 3,000 calories with no weight gain. Thanks, Mike. That's gold. That's Everybody take a look at that. To me, that's huge. That's that's more impressive than somebody going, hey, I'm, I'm 50, 60 years old and I bench 400. I don't care. But his body is utilizing 3,000 calories without change. That's huge. I don't know if you guys understand that. That means his body's functioning at 100%. That's uh, man, that's awesome. And thanks for saying that. I think you get the idea of what that means for you. So if you don't, if this confuses any of you, like what's what's so what he's 50 needs 3000 calories. Most people can't eat that much. Their body doesn't function that well anymore. That's breaking down. It doesn't use carbohydrates. All this is at the end of the day is how well your body utilize, utilizes protein, carbs, fats, exercise, sleep, um, water. It's really what it comes down to. And if you keep pushing it and stay consistent and, and, and not backing down and giving up, you get your body healed by this food, which is medication. And that's the coolest thing I can see for this man. It's like, so if he wants to slice up, you know what he could do? He could cut those calories to 1,500 calories, throw an hour of cardio in, train twice a day, and this guy's ripped in 12 Easy. weeks. Easy. And then he goes back to it. And then, then everybody goes, wait a minute, how can you do this? You're 50 years old. You can't do this. Seven. The food. The food did it. And I wish you all knew that. Again, everyone's going to ask you, what'd you do? What'd you do? What'd you take? Yeah. Yeah. Did you, it's, you ate a little oh, less? man, that's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you for that, Jeffrey, on seeing that one, too. That was a beautiful one. That's a great one. What is the best martial art, and why is it judo? Because <laughs> uh, I, I agree. It's because it teaches you from a standing position that it's going to be hand to hand. Um, and then, you know, obviously the, the it's wrestling, it's jujitsu. Judo is like wrestling and jujitsu all in one. If you studied it long enough, you you've grappled um, and everything gets into that close range. Um, and to be able to use somebody else's force, regardless of their size, that's what's so great about like um, anybody that does judo understands the ability to use their power uh, the other person's power against them, which is an amazing thing to see girls tossing 250 to 300 pound guys um, just with the pull and a push. We're just kind of looking over questions, guys. So if you got questions, put them down there. What do you think about CrossFit for longevity? Oh, absolutely not. Makes no absolute uh, zero sense to me. Bro. Absolutely zero sense to me. None. Again, if you don't know weightlifting, there's there's exercises that are compound movements, right? And then there's uh, secondary exercises and there's form exercises, then there's technique exercises, and there's speed and explosion exercises. And there's so there's a lot of stuff. So from what I've seen is they take 
and, and this is all I did because when I was, uh, my first meet wasn't bodybuilding, wasn't powerlifting, it was Olympic lifting. And so uh, we would train three days a week and we would sit there and it'd be just the, the snatch, the cleans mm -hmm. over and over and over again. But it is such a precise direction or, or, or movement of the bar. It's a movement. And to do that, um, and to do it so much, but so little reps, it really taught me this has to be precise. It has to be pretty. It has to be right in the middle. Yeah. And that's how you get the bar up and over your head. It's a mastery of that movement. It's a manipulation of force and gravity. Yeah. And getting yourself under it and timing it. It's beautiful. Those exercises, there's an art to it. And so to do that exercise in a fatigue state... Ooh makes no comprehension to me because like I've already told you guys over and over again, you're never in a perfect position when you're fatigued and I'm trying to set you up in the best ability. Problem is this bypasses that whole building block of trying to set you up in a safe way. And it puts you right into a fatigue state with exercises that are just yeah. going to torque on you. And that's also why um, the uh, physical therapy and the, uh, PT people are so, so busy because of uh, CrossFit helped them out in their business. And I, and I think all those exercises that they do in CrossFit are awesome. They do like the handstand walks. They do like the ring muscle ups, the, you know, the snatches. But it's the way they do them and they implement them. Why are you going to do snatches for time with some freaking real weight on there? That's just fun to watch. It's fun to watch. It's fun to watch. It it's motivates not, people, gets them going. But it's not smart. Me in a fatigue. I don't think you should do much in a fatigue state. Fuck no. And and so I'll go leash off every once in a while, but it's once in a while where you guys are doing it every single day. You go to the workout. And I don't believe your body doesn't recover from that. Um, it's like the MMA fighters. If you love it, good. Have fun with it. But you right. are going to put yourself in an overtraining position right. to where your comment about longevity. It's not. It's not, not there. It, the guy earlier said he's he's 50 and he's doing 3,000 calories, right? And so to me, that's longevity. He's being able to function in a way to where he's taking in calories and not change his body. Um, and so he's not getting fat from it. When you train at the level they do in CrossFit, which is great and it's cool that they motivate you that much, but you're training at such a 100% level that it, it, there's no off button. And so you're teaching your body that you have to, for the rest of your life, train at that level. And that's what I don't recommend. I think weight training should be four to five days a week is gold. I mean, it's beyond gold. If you can do that, I'm so proud of you. Take a couple rest days, two or three rest days. Uh, if you don't have to do cardio all the time, uh, that's great. I think the opposite of the most intense, and I know that may confuse you. It's like, no, 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 no. You always work out. You always work out. But it, it's got to be smart. Yeah. It's got to be smart. There has to be some kind of comprehension that if you are dieting and training like an animal every single day, that's going to end sometime. There's a lot of mileage in CrossFit. And it's not good mileage. It's bad repetitions. Full circle. What would you say this morning? You said Robbie Robinson does one rep, and it looks better than a guy that does 100 reps. Yeah. So those wads they do and stuff, they, they, they encourage more reps in less time. So you're just sloppily and hastily getting through an exercise, and your form is deteriorating rep by rep, but you just keep going. That is the farthest thing from longevity. It's just mileage. Bad mileage. I was thinking about how can I get tight into squat? He's going to be tall. He's going to be taller than me. How can I get him to squat and save his knees as long as I can in his back? And my comprehension of that is he'll probably do pause squats from the start. I'll probably do very little movement for his squats besides holding it, taking the weight down. And so when he talks about his weight, I hope this happens. I hope it does. I hope this one day they look at this six foot six, 280 pound guy and say, Hey, what do you squat? And he says, I do 315. And they go, You almost weigh 315. Why do you squat for 315? And he goes, Well, I'll show you. And then he goes over there and he sits down on one rep and holds it there for 20 seconds. 
and then he does it again. And he does three reps in one minute of holding it. Very little movement, but the power and the, the structure to this connective tissue and the least amount of mileage, that's what I'm going to teach him. It's like the Titan bar. The Titan yeah. bar, yeah. I could barely get to 400 pounds on that bar. Right. Where normally I could do 10 reps on that thing. So it's like there is a comprehension to stressing your body in the smartest way possible with the least amount of mileage. So that goes back to my point of when I was a kid. I wish I wish I didn't do so much. But again, it's it's volume and you kind of have to go through that stuff. And it, I wouldn't be who I am today if I didn't do that. Right. But great question. But yeah, I'm I'm a fan yeah. of it. It's fun to watch. It motivates people. Yeah, like I'm a fan of the movements. Like I think everybody should be able to, uh, you know, overhead squat or do a handstand. Like th that's basic, but you know, it's how you do it. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, I'm gonna come back and answer this one. One more second. Hold on. I got Snorri here. Anybody know? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, this is a great one. And I can try to give you a little insight on both uh, today. And I'd like to hear Jeff's as well. Mm -hmm. um, nowadays, day offs. And how do I keep calm? Is that kind of what you're asking? Yep. Uh, how do you keep your mind occupied on off days from the gym? I think Jeff can confirm this. I am I am pretty bad for off days. I'll say an off day, and before you know it, that night I say, let's go. <laughs> it's uh, And again, the intelligent part of me knows I should take off days. But the love of what I do and the love of that feeling and, and, and getting in it um, pulls me back in the gym. Yeah. And that's why I say, like, with with – and here's here's our all of our take on this when you love something so heartedly and and so incredible and i asked uh robbie today i asked him this question i said you you really um i'd go mental without lifting i freaking love it and i think you guys understand that and i i absolutely it is a craft to me that i just cannot do without and I asked Robbie about that. I said, hey, you ever taken a month off in your life? And see, we know the answers to this. And we were just talking about some other stuff about uh, character and what we've done. Is like, I know he's never taken a day off, uh, a month off. I know that. It just, it's not what we do. So how can you, when you love it so much, take your days off and keep your mind set? I think the understanding of I got to let the body rest or I'm going to drive it into the ground. Yep. And, and if I keep that in mind, especially now it's easier for me now because I look at my son and I go, I need 10 more years at this level. 
at least 10 more years so I can tussle with him when he's 13 and and lifting. Because that's now, that's the goal is to be this freak to when he is starting to lift um, that I can push him and motivate him and 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 uh, show him what lifting did for his mother and for me and for my family and, and friends. Um, that's what I would really like to do. So I know that I have to take the days off and I need to come back and I need to be smart on days that I can't push it. And, and we've done this the last month. My strength is coming back, right? You guys know about nervous system. And when you, when you trash it, you trash it and you got to let it come back on its own and being smart. And so now it's coming back and there's days that I could just, I could lift the gym and I go, okay, lift another day. I've done enough. I've done better than I did the last two weeks. Stop now. Let's move forward um, with some rest. So that's my take. Um, and I just kind of keep that in the mind that I got to got to take the days off to recover. But it's tough. The, the off days are part of the love of it because without them, you're not going to be able to do it. You keep loving. We just said that about CrossFit. It's like, I, and, and I know that you guys that love CrossFit do not be mad that I said that. I, <laughs> I trust me. If I could do CrossFit every day. Um, and it was good for you, I would do it. I yeah. love that. I love competition. I love testing myself. I love, um, somebody asked, have I ever done the strongman? I've done everything. I've done, uh, competition, you know, 12, uh, yeah. lift competitions with the iron warriors and stuff. So it's like, I love the cleans, the snatches, and I think they're incredible awesome. exercises, um, and used in the right way. So you don't, don't have get to mad. like hearing it though. Yeah. I just, <laughs> It's the truth. You don't have to like it. Yeah, try try to try to take those. And that should try to be balanced the days off. If anybody can do the days off and you're balanced, that's a it's a good thing. Good question, though. Again, you guys, you're not gonna ask that question unless you love it and you've done this for a while. I think his question. Like some of these questions, I you gave very little information. I understood everything. I think I think both Billy and Paul White need a couple of days off because yeah, definitely he, he's he's snoring over there. I love it. Well, they were working in a way that they haven't in a long time. Yeah, and Paul didn't do he did he did a lot for him, but he didn't do a lot. Right, and it was a great thing for him. It was new though. Yeah, it was like he was in the gym for the first time. It was like, I did hyperextension. I got to tell you guys this. I did hyperextensions today and I can do, you guys, you know how you can wrap three plates on your chest and you can do hyperextensions with that strength. I, I, uh, um, Robbie did something today where he took a 25 pound plate and I could barely get five reps with it. So go to the gym today. All of you take a 25 pound plate and put it on the hyperextension in front of you. So it kind of counterbalance gives you a little bit more weight and just do five reps and then remove it from like, we always hold it up here, right? Remove it from that position and let the, hold the weight. Um, so it's thin, stretch it forward. And then when you come back up, pull it underneath you to your abs. Okay. So it's like, it's like you're just stretching and then come up into a contraction, lower back, everything. Try that today. Why I, is that different from the guy that can go and hold 345s and just crank them out? Because you're it's the leverage and the motion that you're doing. So it's the intent behind it, the movement. Yeah. Where the other one was such a pinpointed contraction on the lower lat yeah. that it took it from the inside to the outside lower lat. And I got up just a minute ago and my lower lat cramped. So mm -hmm. it's like, oh, it hit. So you're making the exercise work. You're not just working through the exercise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't let the don't let the machine make you feel it. You make the use the machine for your your own comprehension. Like preachers, you can get in there and just move it, right? Oh, I'm guessing it's working my biceps. I'm moving the machine. Really grab a hold of it and move it so the muscles doing it, the work, not the machine. I guess you'd say. 
Same thing for hypers. I know it's easier to do that stuff with uh, machines, but it should be that way with the the free weights. But we're always learning. I felt good on those uh, uh, at this weight doing the behind the neck pull ups. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Ooh. Right. Robbie gave me some four reps. You guys know I rarely do four reps, um, but he gave me some four reps that really set me up to fatigue. And I saw by the end of today's workout, Robbie was using the same weights I was using on everything. Yeah. So uh, you could see how if I stay in my game and stay heavy and and, and the uh, low reps where the very little changes or uh, mechanics and don't try new things, I'll dust anybody. But Robbie pulled out some moves and he crushed me. And it was so cool to see that, to see that there's still uh, room for me to get so much better than I am now. Hey, thanks for all the donations, guys, today. Appreciate that. That all goes to the uh, fur babies. Uh, somebody had blood work done. Good. Nice job. Nice job. Some people here talking about how they got their blood work done, which is great. And again, blood work is not, uh, if this is in your mindset, this is not for guys my age or women my age. It's for all ages. Um, we had uh, 20-year-olds doing it for the last couple of weeks, and we're finding out, which again, it's crazy, but we're finding out these 20-year-olds' uh, levels were so bad. Um, and so we're, we're doing a lot of fixing right now with a lot of the Titan crew members. We're doing a lot of fixing. And this is frustrating because I bet you guys out there are like, I work out so hard, I diet so much, and I'm not changing. Then we find out there's something going on with your blood levels that are throwing certain things off that makes it hard for your body to give up and change. And so it's cool to be able to see this and go, okay, now we know why. The cardio is not working for you. Uh, the the training, this healthy meal plan is not working for you. We have to do this, this, and this to make sure that you're functioning correctly. I think that's a great thing. The, the one thing I do like about Transcend, too, is that it is an athletic health and fitness, uh, health and lifestyle, uh, company. So it's not a doctor in the sense of your, uh, family medical doctor. These guys are specialized in athletes and how athletes blood work. So they're seeing athletes, not, not just. If that doesn't make sense to you guys, uh, just understand this eating like an athlete um, and training like an athlete does things to your numbers that these guys, they understand this right. and they go, this is why this level on your typical doctor will say there's something wrong. Your, your cholesterol is high. This is horrible. we got to get this fixed. Yeah. So it's like the breakdown of the protein um, and how your body utilizes it. So there's so much factors that uh, I'm assuming none of you out yeah. here that are watching this right now are the average Joe's. You guys are all exercising trying to eat right trying to be better Mm -hmm. and so i'm assuming all of you guys if you go get your blood work done and show it to your family doctor they're gonna go hey there's some issues here and then you show it to transcend and they can explain well this is why your numbers are this is because you're breaking down the, the 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 body and your proteins and it's it's a cool thing to really just Forget everything I've learned and listen to these guys talk about that. I think it's a it's a cool thing to see how we function different than the average person and how our blood functions different for the average person. <clears throat> I don't want to see you eat. Oh, okay. Yeah. I trust me. I've earned one. So I will have a high day here uh, coming up. I will, I will do a good, good, good high day.
So Terry asked a good question. Can you build as much muscle in the chest just using cables? Back in the day, people just flexed to build muscle. Yeah, you do anything, you can build muscle. Um, and you can build muscle uh, with cables um, as long as your nutrition is supporting it and you're training hard enough. Here's the thing, though. I hope you understand, Terry. I, I can kind of see your photo. I don't know if you're uh, – I don't want to insult you and say that you're my age, but uh, you look older than 20 from what I can see. Again, not great eyesight. But that being said, you're missing uh, a whole other portion of training um, when you say, I just want to build muscle in my chest. I understand that maybe you have that, you know, getting up there and the chest doesn't look like you want it to, but there's other things that come from the free weights or pressure on your chest from the bars and stuff. If you can't physically do it because of bad shoulder and stuff like that, use dumbbells. Um, if that's still an issue, then the cables, I'm, I'm glad that you're going to work out and train just for anybody here. You can build uh, you don't need to squat to build legs. Um, you don't need to deadlift to build back. You don't need to bench to build a big chest. And the reason why I definitely 100% squat dead and bench is because the secondary or, or the main focus for me is the stress to the body and the density to the bone and connective tissue because I won't be able to squat. I won't be able to lift in 10 years if I don't put my body under that pressure now. Um, hopefully that makes sense to you guys, but you do get weaker. And so if you're already at cables at a certain 20 year olds, I see these 20 year olds, all they do is machines. And I'm like, wow, they're not getting any of the benefits of what really weightlifting does. And when you guys see Robbie Robinson and you think he's doing this at 76 years old and you're like, well, he just, all he did was work out and eat right. No, he, he stressed his body. That's the first thing he did. He stressed it under those weights, the free weights, the squats, so his bones can handle this. I don't know if you guys, how many times I got to say that, but it, the muscle is going to come and go, um, but your body is going to deteriorate. And if you treat it like a little powder puff, it's going to go faster. Just like your article you sent me about the guys in NASA, uh, the going up in the ships. Oh, right. You got to put stress on the body. And the reason why I went into that is because I don't want to say, yeah, cables build a muscle and you're good to go. Have a nice day. Is because that individual will say, Michael Hearn said I could do cables. That's all. And it's not just, I just kind of cover my bases because the first and foremost is, so much more than the muscle. Like Jeff said earlier, we do what we do today so we can do this in 10 years. That device with the electric stim you used in some of your videos is actually dangerous for your heart. Well, considering Oof. we've never used electric stim in one workout, don't really know what he's talking about. Uh, if he's referring to the new X, that's not even in the same category. So I... I wish people would comprehend or have enough common sense yeah. to think, are you putting on your body something that actually is going to kickstart your heart yeah, or stimulate not, the muscle? It's we're not like, in there with the defibrillator. Yeah, it's like, what is wrong with you? Yeah. Well, I mean, he just doesn't know. Maybe you can do a quick search on the new X, any UX. And but that's not common sense. I, I, I know. It the is. common sense it to, is. for us is just very like. Common. Dude, we're not kickstarting our hearts. It's such a I know. great. Thank you for that. Make sure that you don't ever use one. Yeah. That's the stuff that kind of is like, how do you function in life? Well, I know. Well, people see those kind of comments and, the, and then they go, oh, oh, it's bad for your heart. You know, you get to the other people that are uneducated and have no common sense. That it's amazing on. because this has been part of rehab since the i think the 60s or 70s when the first ones started coming out and they found the the impressiveness to the nerves firing it's yeah you get not still sorry that one that that guy lost me on that one 
Where did this one go? How do we get the metabolism working properly? Once I know that, then it's easy to get any goal. Uh, how do we get the metabolism? Yeah, it's good job. Yeah, good question. And we talked about that throughout this whole process. Make sure you're getting your water in on, on what you need to get. Uh, and the nutrition plan is where it's at. And then just be patient. Be patient on that understanding of when you're taking in that food uh, and what it's doing to your body and watch the signs. And we talk about that, right? Don't we all talk about that in the Titan crew? That's one of the big things we talk about is how we're feeling um, with that food in there to that day that the metabolism just clicks and turns on. Also, you can also do the fast start. Fast start kicks that metabolism into gear in two weeks. That's a great one too. And we're going to leave it there, my gentlemen and ladies. You guys continue to be warriors. We got another, uh, looking at the calendar. So uh, next Tuesday, we are doing check-ins for Titan Challenge 4. Um, so I am excited to see everybody get their check-ins in. And um, that's it for right now. We are... It looks like we are on set the next couple of days. And then again, Friday and Saturday, my movies premiere at Sundance Film Festival. <sighs> Stay calm. Keep going. Let's keep pushing this, everybody. And then I will also get that YouTube video for shopping on a budget, a high day. Um, that's, that's two of the meal plans that we wanted to kind of do. Mm hmm and we'll kind of go over the Titan meal plan too to give you guys some good insight on how that is just changing everybody's game and everybody's getting so much better with that following the plan. You just got to have a high day first. Yes. <laughs> got to get that day in. Thanks, guys.